loi et bien il dit Dieu son message toi le tu loi toi la mani toi le buyenza okuita mulina et il y a Jésus Christ au manda wele comme la mou amen ana le kamasa me mutia me kuansi Ni kamba sabe tukubira ku Yesu munga no Ongele Yesu enga lo This is the awaited time Mutuli joku lilira okuveri mama waife where we are going to listen from our mother sister waife our sister atari wano who is not together with us here ali wale ele mu america who is far and they are in america so tulikuwa baza katonda we thank god tietegeke because she is prepared okugira nife to speak to us ngaka ali kugira nife before she speaks to us tulija kusaba omusumba rodney we are going to ask pastor rodney atulamuseku to greet us kuba yena ali wala nife because he is also together with us umukuto kwa zoom through zoom era ye and he nali jo kutwaniliza is the one that is going to invite omuereza wa katonda the servant of god grace alewis grace alewis Pastor Rodin Pastor Rodin Kwaniliza we welcome you otulamuseku to say hello to us edo yanilize and also welcome omuereza the servant Grace Lewis Grace Lewis Praise the Lord It's so good to be with Kama you It's so good to be with nyo... you again today Kirunji nyo kubera wamuna It's my honor to present Minister Gracia Lewis. And she's prepared to answer some of your questions from yesterday. And now I give it over to Doc Minister Gracia Lewis. Praise the Lord everyone. I give greetings to you Pastor Akira. Pastor Rodney Gray. Musumba Rodney Gray. And to all the sisters and brothers there in Uganda. At this powerful women's conference. I greet everyone who has joined us online. Here in the United States and there in Uganda. I am humbled and honored to be asked to participate in this blessed event. I believe that God is going to change lives. And bring his purpose to fulfillment in each of your lives. During this conference. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to share with these beautiful women of Zion. 
Tata tukuwe bazora kakisaka no Katuge na kukuwe la tuga bane Bawalabo avesayuni let, let each word fall on good ground. May it quicken their spirits. And empower them to be all that you have created them to be. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If God has been good to you, I want you to shout glory. Jagala ole kane mochiti wache. Ole kane katuga bati. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I thank you for this opportunity. Amen. Um, go ahead. Mbeba zanyo oraka kisaka doke mumpade. I understand there are some questions that um, I am to answer, and I will answer them at the at the end of our message. I'm going to ask my interpreter if she would please read Numbers 27, 1 through 11. Matkiri, Tavaniwa, Manasse, Abokunda, Za Manasse, Tavaniwa, Yusufu, Negaro, Yemania, Gabawala, Mara, Noa, Ne, Kogula, Ne, Nika, Ne, Kiruka, Nevaya, Maso, Gabusa. Nemo Masoga Eyazari Kabola Nemo Masoga Baku Nikirina Chona Nago Amen. 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 My topic today is ladies, I want you to know. That you are pregnant with purpose. You are pregnant with purpose that will conquer the status quo. Amen. It has been said that women are the weakest Amen. of the sexes. I do not believe that you can call a woman weak.
When she can carry a baby for nine months, it takes a strong woman to carry that baby for nine months. It takes a strong woman to carry a baby for nine months. Not to mention having to cook, clean, take care of her husband, and possibly other children, and manage a career. And then give birth to that baby. Oftentimes without medication for the pain. That takes a strong woman. But before we move forward, I want you to get in your mind. I want you to think about your dreams, your visions that you have or have had for your life. Now, as we move forward, I want you to let these words of encouragement get into your spirit and hopefully propel you to fulfill God's destiny for your life. Ladies, you are the answer to somebody's problem. You're the key to unlock the potential in somebody's life. Ladies, God wants you to know that he placed within you a power and a purpose to accomplish everything that he has for you to do. Everything that you need is already in you. He designed you that way. Psalms 139 and 4 says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I have a news flash for you. You were created pregnant. You were created with purpose in mind. What's inside your womb is destined to be an agent of change. Okay? The Wait. word of God tells us that greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. The greater one lives inside you. Turn to the person next to you and say this. 
Chukida akulilani omugambe nti. It's more in me than what you can see. Benji nyo evili munda yange kusuinga vinogweli ola bako. Now I want you to point to yourself. Kati mkwenga gwe weso nge mboti. Kogena bangu elo gede and say it's more to me than what I can see. Amen. Amen. Okay. Here in the book of Numbers, and I we see five brave young women. Who lets us know that our gender does, does not determine our strength or our purpose. That God has given to us. Let me give a little historical background. It was in the 40th year since the Exodus from Egypt. Shortly before the Jewish people were to enter the promised land, okay. God informed Moses that each man and I'm emphasizing that word for a reason. In the tribe would receive a parcel of land in his tribe's territory. Okay. Upon the man's death, however, only his sons would inherit the property. Guaranteeing that each plot would remain in the family for generations. However, we see this one brother who died. Zalof okay, Zalofiat did not have any, yeah, did not have any sons. So when he died, he only had girls. And they were not. Women in that time were not allowed to own land. So his daughters did not qualify to receive their inheritance. But these five young women were pregnant with a seed of purpose. That reached farther than just getting some land. That's how I 
God had created them as he has with you. To do great things. And more importantly, to change the status quo. But you know, God's way is not always our way. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. God has a plan for our lives. There are times when it may feel that it's unfair the route he takes us. But take courage because he knows what he's doing. Praise God. You may be in a situation right now that seems unfair. But remember, you're pregnant with purpose. And, and by faith, you can change the situation. By moving forward and walking Go. into your passion. Your passion is your purpose. That God put in you at birth. Now, I know you may ask, how can this happen? How can this be? Let's look at these bold women and learn how they changed the status quo. There are five points I want to bring out. Okay. First, their approach. In verse 1, we see to approach means to move forward or to come near. Now, without a doubt, being sisters, I'm sure, I'm sure they had already discussed the issue among themselves. They did not go to a cousin, a male cousin. The scriptures yes. did not say that they went to someone. To discuss how unfair the law was. But I believe they discussed it among themselves. And then decide the time to approach Moses about their concern. I must add, we must be wise in our approach. Because 
but you cannot change the status quo from the background. You must move forward in prayer and with wisdom. Okay. Now we have to look at their posture. In verse 2, we talk about their posture. They did not approach Moses sitting or timid. They stood before him with courage, boldness, and in faith to speak their truth. There is nothing that can come from God apart from the channel of faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. There will be no blessings, no, no achievement, no victory without faith. They believed God when he promised the children of Israel the land of Canaan. They were women, but they were children of Israel. So they probably said, God meant for us to have a portion of the land as well. So by faith, they approached in boldness and stood with courage before an audience that would intimidate most of us. <laughs> Point number three, the audience. Let's talk about this audience. The Bible said they stood before Moses. Eleazar. Eliza and the entire community of Israel, which in some records were over a million people. Let's remember the, the history of Israel, the, the Israelites. They were murmurers. They complained about everything. They gave Moses a lot of trouble. They never seemed to be satisfied with the goodness of God. He blessed them with bread. Then they wanted meat. They wanted water. When they were thirsty. It was always something with this massive group of people. So it took great courage for these women. To come before this massive body 
to make their requests. Let me say this. Be careful and prayerful about who about who you share your concerns with in any situation. Make sure that that person or those people <laughs> have a prayer life with God. It will give you counsel based on the word of God. The Bible says that the young women came before Moses, Eleazar, and the entire community. But it was Moses who went before God. Musa yagenda maso katonda to ask what to do in this situation. These young women were about to change tradition and the status quo. It has been said that one of Jesus's and Paul's greatest challenges was dealing with the traditions of the leaders of the law. Some traditions can stop growth and hinder progress. But these women we're about to change traditions and history. Amen. Let's deal with the approach. Amen. I mean, the location of their approach. The location of their approach. The location of their approach was a place of worship, the tent of meeting. This was the place that God met his people and spoke to them concerning his will. We should also meet God at a place of worship. It does not always have to be at a church. It can be in your prayer closet. In your kitchen. In your bed, in your bedroom. Just play a place of worship before God. Keep going. Okay. But meet God. Okay. But meet with God at a place of worship. Worship Him before you ask. Worship God before they ask. Because God inhabits the praises of His people. It was at that place of worship that they pleaded their case. Point number five. They pleaded their case. 
First, let me say, these women, this is a point to remember. These women know who they were. There was the Lola Fads, the Lola Fads daughters. Women of God, you must know who you are. Yeah, you may be Mary and John's daughter. But you may be Peter's wife. You may be Joanne and Raymond's mother. But you are more than a daughter. A wife. Amen. You're more than a wife. You're more than a mother. Or even a grandmother. You are God's child. You have been created in his image and in his likeness. This one is, this one, this, this sentence right here is going to bless you. You were created to be creative in order to create. I'm going to say that one more time. You were created to be creative in order to, to create. Katonda ya kutonda, gosobolo kuba Kevin tuna webi otonda, munsi muno. You have been created to change the world. Katonda ya kutonda, ochuse ensi. And to shake up the status quo. Ero kuchusa ebi into ebi konta na nobula mubo. Praise God. In verse 3, they share what happened to their father. Your lineage does not determine your purpose or your destiny. God has placed in each of your wombs a seed of purpose. And the only person who can abort it or abort that purpose is you. I want you to use your, your sanctified minds and picture this. See these women standing before the lower court. Including Moses. Eliezer. And the, and the whole entire congregation pleading their case. Notice. They did not go get a male cousin. Or, or a male from another tribe to plead their case. They pleaded their own case. 
Tonga ya webaji manisa katonda nga bo abachala. Let it be known that their father had daughters. Kachimanyi wenti no. Tata wawe yalina abana abobu wala. So they wanted to know why are they being penalized for something they had no control over? The status quo said the land was only for males. That was the law. This case had to go to a higher court. So this, so Moses took the case to God. God's grace and favor always overrides the law. Somebody said that favor isn't fair. When God has promised you something and what he has put inside your womb to birth when God says yes no God will say yes when man say no so women praise God so women get in position to give birth to your dream to your vision to your purpose well, the ruling had to come down from the higher court. And the ruling was the higher court's ruling. The higher court's ruling was give the girls what they want. God is saying to you, He's going to give the girls what you want. They wanted land. But God had a greater purpose. God had a purpose to change the status quo in their spirits. The change that they delivered not only changed their lives. But it changed the lives, uh, uh, but it changed the laws for women from that day forward. What God has placed in your womb is something that will not only change your life. But it will change the lives of generations to come. Yes. What's, okay. What's in your spirit may challenge traditions. But through, but through prayer and persistence, it can change lives for many generations. Not only in your country, but other countries as well. So in my closing, I challenge you 
To move forward with boldness. Take your stance with courage. Be prayerful and wise on who you approach your, your vision, your dreams. Why? Because can't everybody handle your baby? Go to God and worship before you ask. Please your case before God and get wise counsel. Will the labor get hard sometime? Absolutely. But get in position. Push out what God has given you. Your failure to do so can affect future generations. So remember your passion is your purpose. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I understand that there are some questions that were asked on last week. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yesterday, yeah. I'm sorry. And yes, um, Pastor Rodney asked, could I address those questions? Yes. And, and I'm going to open it up for questions from my message as well. But let me answer the questions from yesterday. The question was, uh, one of the questions was, why do men marry more than one woman, woman when God only created Adam and Eve and not Adam, Elaine, and Joy to be wise, okay? Well, let her, let her, let her talk, let her go. Oh Wait. yeah, I'm sorry. Katonda, yatonda Adam ne Eve, na eruachi chisangi wanti abami, babela na abachala abasuka muomu. Well, I think uh, Dr. Powell gave the best answer yesterday. Uh, it was never God's intention for man to have more than one wife. But because of sin, Man went off and did his own thing. But with every sin, God gives grace. And it is his will that we come back to him. To line up with his will. So mainly it was because of sin. Yeah. The other question was, how can women overcome poverty? I think in my, in my message today, I kind of touched on that. Women, listen. You have the key already in you 
to overcome anything. Even poverty. I believe some of you have gifts. And abilities. That can change the world. Can change your situation. But they have been buried. But God wants to dig them up. Use the gift that God has given you. Your gift will make room for you. You may be sitting on a $1 million, $2 million. Yes. But you got to use it. You got to use it. So the power to rise above poverty is already in you. The next question was This really stirred me. The next question was How do you endure? How do you endure when a man tells you he's tired of you? I'm going to be nice and say this. It goes back to what I said in my message earlier. Know who you are. Your identity, especially if you are in Christ, is not in your husband. You are to honor him as your husband. But that's not, he didn't call you, he didn't make you. Your husband is there to cover you. But your identity is in Christ. So if your husband said he's tired of you, pray for him and know that God will never get tired of you. He's the best man you can have. Those are my answers to those questions. God bless you. <laughs> Does anyone have any more questions for me? I have some people ask questions okay. about you. Do we have anyone with a question in our meeting? Okay. Yes, there is. Thank you so much, Pastor. Our, our families are many. Many of our families. We've had dreams in our families. 
Just like the person who, who taught yesterday said it. You, she told us that we must be patient and give back to the gifts that are on the inside of us. Our families have very bright children, but they need help. They need help so that our visions to those children can be seen. So it is our prayer. Can you repeat what she said for me, please? She said that they have they have dreams in their families, they have children, and like you said, that we need persistence for us to give back to those dreams, but sometimes they are short of money. They don't have things like school fees to educate those children. Mm. So their dreams or visions towards those children are never put forth. How can they go over that? Okay. There is also another question. Mm -hmm. You know, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are his children. And he promised that he will supply all of our needs. Musumba agambye ntino katonda asobola okwanukula oba okuddamu ebyetago bya febyo nabyo na songa bwasomesezza bwe tulina okubera ne tuba abayiya kuba buli chimu chetu etaga chirimu my suggestion for her um abo is I think I, Oh, I'm sorry. Is to position herself, if possible, um, with organizations or other people who are already doing what she wants to do. Yeah. It may not be in the same area where she is. She may have to go to, 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 to get it. But that's one, one of the ways that I would suggest. Okay, what was the other question? The other one was just an appreciation. She was appreciating you. Thank you so much. God bless her. God bless her. Thank you. There are also two more questions written down. Okay. Yeah, let me read them. My husband is a Muslim, but he has no problem with me going to church. I have always told him to go with me to church, but he declines. What can I do to bring him to church? Bring the that church is, to uh, him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bring the church to him. Then, then, then another question, Pastor. Uh, she says, some fellow women mock us in things like how we dress, how we feed, uh, our state financially in our homes. How do we as women overcome such mockery? Okay, before she, uh, Rachel, before she answers that, could you let yes. them know the answer that she gave to the other question in the language? In, in other words, she's, oh. yeah, she's saying to bring the church to her husband, husband, meaning that she wants her to represent God before her husband. Right. Okay. 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 Okay.
Wevuka echokula virako. Oba situle kanisa. Ojitwale waka mungeri. Chigwe mwenyini vera e kanisa. Vera echokula virako. Okole ebikole wa mchachi. Wewe njiri ojitwale waka. Okusaba osabirenge waka. Chategezanga gamba. Ntie kanisa jize waka. Umuami wabata jia. Gwokole choche njini. Choteke gwokola. Thank you. Yes, Pastor, I have interpreted for them. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Rodney. You're welcome. Okay, your third question. Yes, this other one was to do with how to overcome mockery. There are fellow women who mock other women in the ways they dress, how they feed, and their financial status. So she asked, how do we overcome such mockery? You know, those types of things hurt. You can't, you can't just sweep it under the rug and pretend as if it does not hurt. But my, I guess my, my response to that is to overcome evil with good, continue to yeah. walk with their heads up high in what God has blessed them with. They are not identified, excuse me, people may identify them based on their social status or the clothes that they wear, but that's not how God yeah. sees us. Again, it goes back to knowing who we are and don't allow mm -hmm. no one, and I mean no one, to, identify, to, to make us feel less than because God doesn't see us like that. The scripture says we are fearfully and wonderfully made, not based on what and I'm talking, I'm like, I'm forget. I'm forget. Yeah, let her, yeah, let her interpret some of that. Okay, you. I will. Okay, summarize what she said so far, Rachel. Okay. Wali wo omoko fe abu zizanti no abakaz ziba na fe ba tujere goba ba tujoga mungeli engeli je tuambala mu eneisa ya fe engeli je tuliamu esente. Musumba zemu na gamba, nti gwengwa mchala, oteke duo kumanya chicholi mkatonda. Katonda buwaba kulaba, takutunuli la kusinzi la kungeri jobo ya ambademu, kumere jolia, esente oba wezili oba teziri uo, obo limufumbo, bato limufumbo, katitofa ayo kubantu chiche bogera, na yetamblo gende maso, omanye katonda wona chicholi, ntoli wamanyi. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I forgot I'm not in America. Please forgive <laughs> okay. me. I got caught up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor, for the word. We appreciate. We 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 are going into uh, the next session. Okay. Yeah, so okay. we can. Thank you so much. We really appreciate. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everyone, for coming on today.